Good morning. morning. Welcome to Chapel in the Woods this morning as we're able to worship outside on this feels almost frosty morning. (laughs) But we are here and grateful to be in the beauty of God's world and enjoy our worship service this morning outside. Welcome to our live streamers as well. I hope you can see some of the beauty that we get to enjoy in person. I invite you to uh, stand and wave to our uh, live streamers as well and greet one another, and then we will remain standing for our gathering words. Good morning, live streamers. Let's join together together in our gathering words this morning. Come walk by the light of faith. Come, travel with confidence in the journey of faith. Come, allow the spirit to shape the desires of your heart. Rejoice that in Christ we have become a new creation. Let's sing praises to our God of light and love. Our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 451.
If you'll join me, please, in the prayer to begin. God of holy direction, help us walk by faith, not by sight. May our vision be your vision, seeing the hearts of others and not judging from outward appearances. With our eyes wide open and filled with your light, give us the dream of a world that grows and blossoms from the tiniest mustard seed of faith into your reign of goodness, justice, and peace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'm reading from Psalm 20 today, a lit liturgy for the king, a prayer for victory. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall stand upright. Give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. And then from the Gospel of Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't wait to read the word. <laughs> if you'll please join me in the prayer for insight. Risen Christ, Shine your light of holy direction and wisdom into our hearts and minds through the scriptures. Help our lives be transformed to claim your promise and walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. And now from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. This is the parable of the growing seed. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it's grown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. And then from Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, 
We regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me this morning? God of all creation, we are grateful to be here together this morning. And it seems a little easier when we are in the beauty of your world to just be still and to listen and to be empty. That your spirit your Holy Spirit may fill us with your wisdom, with an understanding that you are always with us, and that as we join together in heart and mind, that we can give you the glory, Lord, and the honor and the praise. May all of us join together in the words that come from these lips. Praise your holy name. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, how many people here have planted some seeds uh, in the springtime? A few? Okay. Yeah, grass, anything. Anything with seeds, it's fine. Flowers, vegetables. <coughs> how many people have picked out some weeds? Or maybe sprayed them like we're not supposed to spray them anymore, okay? <clears throat> well, think about it. There's usually a couple of weeds that never go away, especially those prickly ones. Mm -hmm. What are those? Those thistles, and they grow underground, and you think you got one, and then, oh, no, there's another root that pops up here and pops up there. Gardening for some of us is mandatory in the summer. It is for me, even if it's, like, Later than I do, I got to plant some seeds somewhere and watch it grow. Sometimes I have some family members that would just as soon have thistles in their yard, and they don't really care if the whole yard looks like that. But there's one thing for certain. We all enjoy the fruits of our labor, whether it's the beautiful flowers, eating wonderful strawberries or blackberries or green peppers or whatever it is. We really do have a harvest, whether we plant things or not. Today's gospel from Mark, which I want to start with this morning, I, I call it kind of a seedy, a seedy scripture, because <clears throat> it is kind of hard to understand at some point. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God through the parables of scattering seeds everywhere, and he talks about the mustard seed. But it all boils down to it is wild growth beyond our imagination. The mustard seed is, if you just put a pencil dot on your paper, that's about all the bigger a mustard seed is. And it's nothing that people want. It's a weed, and it's a bush, and it's not a tree where, people, where birds can fly and land on. They're just mischievous, heavenly seeds that Jesus is talking about. And think about it. When you plant a seed, do you have any control of it after that? No, you do have control if you water it or maybe needs a little extra sun. <coughs> Excuse me. But think about when we plant things in our lives other than a physical seed, like we plant love, we plant patience, we plant hope and generosity. We do that by our own actions and people watch. Our families are looking and seeing and our friends. And this is how a Christian is. And when you think about without planting all those kinds of seeds, what would our walking path look like? It would, to me, would be like a dead end and nothing would be growing. But there are other ways also to plant seeds that you might not even know of. One of the ways I remember, one of the things I remember about my career as a visiting nurse was we would always, we visited mothers and babies and new families and we would always talk to women about domestic violence. 
Are you safe? How do you solve conflict? Are, um, do you feel like you have a plan if things aren't going so well? And we would ask these questions and make sure people had a plan or a safe place that they knew they could go. Well, we ha I had one woman, I'll just call her name, was, uh, it wasn't really Maureen, but we'll call her Maureen. She was very offended that I would talk to her about this topic. And right there, that always puts the little red flag that something might be going on. And I just reassured her. I said, put this card to, to the 800 number in a shoe where no one can find it, just in case you might need it. Several years later, she called our office and told us that she had gone to a shelter. And she just wanted to let us know how thankful she was that she had that 800 number. So you never know where you plant those seeds of wisdom, of love, of God's grace, that they're going to blossom into something. And, and in this case, possibly would have possibly saved her life. But I think about that a lot and planting that seed that no one deserves to be in an abusive relationship. Everyone deserves to be, be filled with God's love and treated with dignity and respect. So if you think about anything in your life right now where you might have planted a, some kind of seed, whether it was at the workplace, in your family, in your church family, anywhere right now, just think of things that you might have said or done or people who would have watched that grew into something else or beyond your imagination. And how have you walked alongside of those folks who need to connect and reconnect and hear those seeds of love and grace and patience and gentleness and kindness? The parable of the mustard seed, Jesus is speaking to his disciples to reassure them that his ministry might seem small in the beginning. But there would be a time when these seeds that were planted that growth seemingly overnight would happen, and his mission would spread like that mischievous mustard seed overnight, a time where every nation and all of God's creation would gather together because of faithful planters and attentive gardeners. Some commentators see this as end times, when all will be drawn into the Christian way. However, Robert Funk sees this parable as a twist on the Ezekiel cedar tree, which is in Ezekiel 17, which says, Yahweh plants a cedar shoot on the mountain heights of Israel and it produces branches and bears fruit and becomes a splendid cedar where birds of every kind will nest and find shelter in the shade of its branches. In the time of, of the Hebrew times, the cedar was the most majestic tree and the wild mustard seed is a pesky weed nearly impossible to eradicate. There is a strength in that peskiness and that infectiousness that Jesus is trying to help us understand. Whether it's the thistles or the goldenrod that you can never get away, uh, get, uh, get rid of, the reign of God does not have to be imported from anywhere, from far away from the cedars of Lebanon. It can be right here in our backyard, right here in this beautiful space that is so inviting to folks in our own community, in our lo take a load off. We have our prayer walk in there, and we people didn't even know this is back here, and they think it's, it's you know, not, they're not able to come back. And it's interesting to say, yeah, come on, this is, this is a community space. This is why we put it all together. This is what God asks us to do. So things take root by very small steps of faith. And that is another way I see this mustard seed is it's a small step, but every, every little bitty way of kindness, of joy, of calm, of presence, of God's love, every little seed that we plant can be mischievous and grow, and you just never know. With every seed of yes, Lord, I will go, Lord, use me. God's dream grows into this wild and boundless <coughs> radical faith that challenges and transforms the cultivated fields of comfort and status quo. God's reign sometimes seems impossible to us to take root, posing a challenge of the way things are to the way things could be, 
a challenge to economic and social injustice, to prejudice, to misplaced priorities of materialism and discontent in our lives. This tiny of seed, this mustard seed, can be barely seen. But like God's grace that is always with us, that grows and grows and grows, once planted in our hearts, we and our lives are transformed. We also begin to experience that awe and wonder of God's work within us and among us. We care for each other through thick and thin. We care for the earth. We know that it's not going to be a neatly manicured field out there, but we know <laughs> that those small seeds of faith grow, fed by the word, made flesh by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are never, ever the same. Once that relationship takes real hold of us, at the very root of our being. And that is where we experience that joy, that effervescence, that good news that we can spread out to our neighbor and the world. So what stirs you to action? What stirs you to plant a seed? Do you bring life to each and every situation? Or are you caught up in the death dealing chaos that seems to be on every news, every social media, over and over again? Put it aside and know that we can be those God's, God's rainmakers, those balance keepers in the world where our heart's desires can be seen. As in the psalmist who says, the heart's desire is to defeat the enemy with the power of God on our side. And what is the enemy? What is the enemy today that you would name? We don't have soldiers coming at our borders, but we do have enemies of hate, of fear, of chaos of discrimination, and all those desires of our hearts to reverse those, to make God's dream a reality. This is how it is that these little small seeds can be grown into this beautiful, beautiful world. But sometimes the desires of our heart are the farthest things that we do. Our self-centeredness, our envy, our lack of self-worth, our greed, or hateful speech, denigration of a whole group of people. This is self-deception that justifies things as we have in the past, like slavery, exploitation of human capital, exclusion of entire groups of people. It seems like we always want to demonize someone. And the Bible is filled with those stories of kings who went to war for wrong reasons or frankly just went to war to finagle, to manipulate, to contort the law for their own purposes. And faithful walking can sometimes go down the wrong path in the name of God. And we have seen those things happen as well. And the psalmist knew this. And the psalmist is, has a plea that we could offer ourselves completely and humbly to allow God's power and provision to replace to place our request for help in the challenges that we face in the arms and the wisdom of God. God will take us to the future that God dreams for us all. It is really hard when we know we've tried to plant a seed or have planted a seed and you just don't see a sprout anywhere. I've had that happen, too. Like, where are the sunflowers? <laughs> well, apparently the chipmunks really like those seeds, too. And sometimes that does happen. But we, as faithful folks, know that Jesus is at our side. And we forget that. I forget that. And we don't have to be afraid. And that we are trusting in the power of God's love and grace. And this is the message that Paul has to those early Corinthians to just take a breath, which we can on this beautiful, glorious morning with that breeze blowing in our faces, that a faith-filled life is powered by that Holy Spirit, that advocate, that helper, that giver of wisdom. And sometimes, again, we forget, and all we have to do is kind of sit back and take a breath. Try to respond instead of react to what's happening. And when you hear God asking you to just 
plant this little seed, whatever it is, say yes. Whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life in the here and the hereafter. We hear in this letter to the early church that we are a new creation just as when seeds are planted that seed becomes a new creation and when we have Christ living in our hearts and in our lives we will pass from those death dealing ways into life giving from darkness into light by faith alone we are saved sola fide Martin Luther would say we it's not through our good works when we walk by faith and not by sight, our aim is to please God, to be with God, to focus on God in every word and action and give God the glory for all that we have, not ourselves. In John Wesley's sermon, Salvation by Faith, he said, Faith is the gift of God. No one is able to work it in himself or herself. It's the free gift of God, which God bestows not on those who are worthy of his favor, not on such as are previously holy and fitted to be crowned, but on the ungodly and unholy and on those who till that hour were fit only for everlasting destruction, those in whom was no good thing and only plea was God be merciful to me, a sinner. God's pardoning mercy supposes nothing in us but a sense of mercy and misery. But it's that understanding, that inability to remove those things that keep us from God, that God will help us. God allows us to freely walk in that faith for the sake of God in whom he would be always pleased from John Wesley. Faith is the eye of the newborn soul. Faith is the eye of the newborn soul. So how is it? that we walk by faith and not by sight into the future. Faith. What is faith? If you could define it, what would you say it is? It's trusting in the unseen, believing in the unseen world. We believe in air. We don't see it. We see it blowing and the leaves are moving. We believe in electricity. You plug something in, you know it works. Our microphones are working. We see the rays of the sun, do we? We know what the rays of the sun do. Sometimes we get to see it maybe through the dust in our house. But we know that faithful walking trusts in the power of love, hope, grace, and not our own GPS, but God's positive steps, God's <laughs> peaceful steps, God's power that sustains us walking by faith. Should we count our steps every day? How many people count their steps every day? Okay, did you know that the 10,000 is a big sham? <laughs> it, it really is only five. Wow. Really? Yeah, there, it was a marketing ploy by uh, when the, the um, this is what I read. It wasn't on the internet, it was an article in a newspaper. <laughs> that, and that when the Olympics were in Japan, an uh, individual thought this would be a great marketing thing to get everybody moving, so he just picked 10,000 steps out of air. So the research now is, you know, five or six, you're still good. You're still good. But 10 is good, better. But five or six will, you know, keep you moving. So what steps have you taken in your life to plant those seeds of faith? To walk by faith, not by sight. Paul says, if you're preoccupied for God's sake, if we are in our right mind, that's what we should do. The love of Christ urges us on, propels us to support us and give us the ways in which we understand that he died for all people. And that because of Christ, we can all have new life. That everything will become new. Working together with great hope and integrity Ephesians 4, 2, 3 says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. Binding yourselves together with peace. And remembering, 
You can't go wrong by doing what is right in the eyes of God, no matter how difficult it might seem. In our future ahead, vow to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God as our uh, beloved, now deceased, Bishop Reuben Job tells us in his book. Dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The bottom line is we don't get extra credit for doing what God expects us to do. God is not indebted to us for doing what is expected. But in our 21st century minds, to become a servant, to have humble thoughts about how it is that God has given us all these gifts and how do we use this boundless love and grace as we breathe and each beat of our heart beats, how do we show people? How do we please God? How do we reveal that every day is a time for us to reflect on the power of the faith we have. Faith to move the insurmountable has been given to us. It's already been planted in our hearts to grow wild as the mustard seed, to be a participant in covering the earth with God's grace and mercy for all. And every nation, every city, every town, every village, every backyard. God is at work. God is at work. Among us, and then trying to help know what our deepest desires are, I invite you this week to just think about this psalmist who says, These are the, this is the deepest desire of my heart that all nations will know the love of God, that Jesus is present wherever there is faith the size of a mustard seed, a tiny seed, and we don't know where that seed will go or grow. We just have the hope and the trust that that mustard seed is alive and working in the world in every circumstance, every situation to bring hope in the name above all names, Jesus Christ our Lord. Today, let all Christians across this planet pledge themselves to share the gospel with all people. Let all Christians pledge themselves to save the lives of our children. Let all Christians pledge end to poverty, disease, hunger, and war, and violence as a solution to conflict, to save our earth from our own destructive ways. And may we go forth from this place thinking about the seeds maybe that someone planted in us that grew. Think about the seeds that you have planted that might have grown. Think about the places that you still need to plant some seeds of God's love and grace that others may walk by faith and not by sight. Faithful walking together into the future, unafraid, and waiting with every step to go where God wants us to go. Are you ready? Are you ready to grow into those pesky, contagious, joyful seeds that are planted? Can we walk together? To God be the glory. Amen. One of the joys is sharing our prayers together, our celebrations, um, prayers for Dave's brother-in-law, Ray, who passed away this week, and Mary is his wife of many years. So please pray for, pray for Mary and her family. I, I was privileged to officiate a my cousin Marcella's funeral, who was 94, she was more like a mom to me, and, um, and her kids were like my kids. So they had five kids, we had 10 kids, so you can imagine what it was like when we got together. 
and our childhood memories are just so precious. So just if you'd pray for the Tuckerman, pray for the Tuckerman family. Um, that would be appreciated as well. Okay, so Millie is uh, at home, um, what, at Jennifer's home, and her testing is negative, <laughs> so she's just trying to get out of her wheelchair, pretty much, yeah. Thank you for all who came to help yesterday. Uh, we had our uh, international dinner. Um, it was delicious. We had lots of fun, probably 70 or so people, and I heard that uh, about $2,000 was raised to go to the angel funds at the Madison schools, which is the funds that when kids need a little extra, there's something there that they can tap into. Okay. Can, can you pray for Lexi, who survived childhood cancer, but now has it back as an adult? Uh, pray for her. Amy, who also is going through cancer treatments. Pray for Robin, who's doing some heart uh, camp counseling, and uh, just praise the Lord for such a good mom. Anything else? sitting next to a new friend. <laughs> She's been in the sanctuary for many weeks, but I've never had the chance, and my own fault, to get to know her better. Awesome. So please take advantage of that. Very good. Me too. Yes. Yes. In the yes. 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 Awesome. Well, anything else? One I'm more. Yeah. Hey, continue prayers for my wife, Barb. But they're back issues. But, but she, she can still, still make, make some darn good cookies. <laughs> Prayers for Barb and her back issues. Yeah. And I know we've, we've, we've had, had this, we've had a couple of losses from of children this week. One in the lake and one that was brutally murdered. Um, so just prayers for those two families. I, I know it's it just, you can't express the sorrow that, that that comes to you with these things that happen. And um, again, just pray for ways in which we can address issues of mental health and uh, safety as well. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God of love, we pray today that we may truly see as you see, that you will help us to walk by faith and not by sight and be our vision of what can be and how beautiful it is that we can just come together in this beautiful space to pray for one another, pray for those who are in harm's way, pray for those who are seeking medical treatment for serious conditions that your healing touch and presence will be among it all. Help us to see through your eyes that we can be those pesky mustard seeds. 
And then in that peskiness, you will show us the path of faith before our feet. For it is with only, only with you that our heart can see rightly as we travel with our Lord and Savior this path of grace and love. We pray for all in the world that need to know of your provision. We pray for peace earnestly, Lord. We pray for peace and wisdom among leaders to come together and, and see that we are all one in you. All people want the same thing, to be loved and ex accepted and treated with great respect and dignity. Sometimes, Lord, there's a few prayers left on our hearts and we ask for a few moments this morning to send those prayers to you. We thank you, Lord, for this time of prayer, of hope, and of trust in you. And may we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us using trespasses. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Are our offering baskets out here today? <laughs> Okay, we have a basket you can put your offering in on the way in or way out, and we also have a portal if you uh, like to engage in the technology, and there's also a QR code in our bulletin. You can just take a picture. So thank you for, offer for offering your blessings back to God that allows us to walk humbly and to serve those who are the community that God has entrusted to us. And it was a beautiful community last night, uh, seeing all the churches come together. And we had hamburgers, we had sausages, we had lots of fun. And uh, it was really a, a joyful group. And that is what life is about. So if you would uh, stand as we sing Gloria Patri, number 70 in the hymnal, and we'll have a prayer over our offering. Bountiful God, your kingdom is like that mustard seed scattered on the ground. How it grows, we don't know, but we know it is abundant. And may we be part of that growth and that harvest as these gifts we bring to you this day, that they might bear fruit of your kingdom here, where all may be fed, all may be blessed, and all may be loved. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in our closing hymn, Faith While Trees Are Still in Blossom.
Go forth to proclaim the good news that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Go forth sharing new life and God's gifts of mercy and grace. Go in the joy and the peskiness of Jesus Christ this morning. Plant some seeds. Amen. I look forward to to come help us in the narthex. We're going to pack up the things that we're going to take to a conference this week. Okay. <laughs>